teacher, we ended the previous lesson talking about plant and animal cell organization. We also talked about the structure of its organelles. That's right. Today, we will talk about how the structural features in a cell are related to their functions. Sounds good. Let's start with a question. What is the outermost part of an animal cell? Hmm. Um, a cell wall? No. <laughs> Once again, what's the outermost part of an animal cell? Oh, animal cell. Um, the cell membrane. Good. And what is the outermost part of a plant cell? Of course, the cell wall. Yes. Now, let us imagine that a cell is like a fortress city. I know. Animal cells have only one wall of the fortress, which we call the cell surface membrane, or just cell membrane. That's right. And plants have two walls of the fortress. The outermost fortress wall is the cell wall, and the inner fortress wall is the cell membrane. Very good. So plant cells have two layers of protection. Like in a fortress, usually the inner wall is guarded by more guards than the outer fortress wall. Thus, it will get harder and harder to penetrate the next line of defense. I suppose that in the cell, the cell membrane should be the one harder to penetrate, right? Yes. In biology, we have a special term for it. We can say that the cell membrane is selectively or partially permeable. It means that it only allows some molecules to pass through. So what kind of molecules can pass through the cell membrane? Well, imagine a fortress and invaders. The invaders that have smaller and thinner bodies are usually more agile and can dodge attacks from the guards. Thus, they can enter through small gaps. In the case of cells, the smaller invaders are the small molecules like oxygen and water. So, what are the identical structures of small gaps in a cell? These small gaps would be the minute pores in the cell membrane. Ah, I see. Just to confirm, cell walls are easy to penetrate? Yes, they are. And that's why we call them fully permeable. Hmm. Since cell walls are fully permeable, it does not affect molecules passing in and out, right? That's right. And cell walls are fully permeable because they have larger pores. Cell membranes are partially permeable because they have minute pores. But why is that so? Well, this difference in permeability is due to the different components that they are made from. For instance, the cell wall is made up of cellulose, while the cell surface membrane is made up of phospholipid bilayers. Mm, so, both have different molecular characteristics that lead to a difference in permeability? That's right. Now, besides for cellular transport, cell walls have other roles too. Teacher, I've been reading up so I know the answer. Oh, tell me then. Sure. First, it keeps the shape of a cell. Uh-huh. Mm, second, it prevents the cell from bursting as it absorbs water since the cell wall is flexible. That's right. Third, it maintains a pressure within the cell called the turgor pressure that keeps the plant upright and rigid. Marvelous! <laughs>